All right, guys, welcome back to F1 News. In the wake of Fernando Alonso's mega contract extension with Aston Martin, that makes it rather unlikely that Carlos Sainz will be joining Aston for next season and beyond. That leaves rather few options for what remains the hottest prospect driver on the grid that is a free agent for next season. Apparently, though, Mercedes are looking to snap up the offer. Sainz and Mercedes differ somewhat on what they want in terms of a contract length, but the belief is the Sainz are talking and a deal will be done in the very near future. Will this be a stopgap for Antonelli? But if it is, would it be Sainz that would part way in a couple of years? Or could it be George Russell? Very much interested your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. First of all, this is the calendar. Confirmed rather earlier than usual for next year. Again, 24 rounds. Largely similar to what we presently have, but it is slightly different. The key talking point, of course, is, as has been rumoured and is now confirmed, the Australian Grand Prix will again start the season. This is Formula 1 heritage, and it is good to see it back in business. I would, of course, love to see a world in which Brazil was uh, an Interlagos was again the final round of the season but yes we go Australia China as a double header to start the season then to Japan then to Bahrain then to Saudi on a triple weekend which is you know triple header weekends very interesting start to the year right I believe this is Ramadan related timing wise they're going to do Australia first again but you know Australia China Japan Bahrain Saudi is quite the way to start then we go to the States then back to the European Canada right it was the classic thing where they say oh no all about sustainability and then, um, you know, I mean, have a look at some of these flights they take. Miami, back to Imola, Monaco, Barca. Then we do the classic Montreal for some reason. I think it's holiday related in the middle of June. But I will note as well a couple of things on the mid-season breaks. Because as we see here in July, we have a relatively big break between Silverstone and Belgium. There's like three weeks off there. Then we go to Hungary, Budapest. And then we have another summer break. So a little bit confusing on the timings here just because there's so many races in a row to start off the season. Then we have a three-week break in the middle of the year, which is like a summer break. But then we have the actual summer break after Hungary into Zandvoort. So yeah, I don't really know. Then it cracks in after that with Italy, Azerbaijan, Singapore, Austin, Mexico, Brazil. And then again, it closes the calendar next year in what could be an interesting title fight. I'm very much hoping that next year we actually have something that goes down to the wire and some of the key candidate drivers in that conversation we'll discuss in a second but to end in Vegas Qatar Abu Dhabi not going to make the hairs on the back of my neck stand up to be honest but it is what it is and yes Toby Gruner points out there's two summer breaks next year's Canada but again 24 races so no step down at all and I don't think there will be until they try and add another one because I imagine 25 isn't really too far away but speaking of 2026 we've got to discuss Fernando Alonso it's funny right we talked about this yesterday about the rumors what was going on with Red Bull Aston Alonso everything that was happening and literally as I press publish Aston confirmed the extension. I think the video was still relevant in terms of all the discussion, but it was just funny timing, really. So Alonso is staying in Aston Martin. That's kind of what we rumoured in yesterday's video anyway. And as he says, I'm here to stay, says Fernando Alonso. This is basically all he said. And honestly, it's so commendable from Fernando to be staying around in the sport, given how challenging the sport is, to be able to, at his age, sign a contract extension like this, especially when he says, this is the longest contract he's ever signed. Now, Sure, from a racing perspective, we believe it takes him for 25-26. However, post-Formula 1, potentially, or whenever he decides to step away, I imagine it's a two-plus-something-year deal, he will remain an ambassador, it seems, for Aston, with many other options as well. There's even rumours that potentially post his career... Whenever he decides to step away from Ford or which I don't know, maybe it's never. But um, his plan is to stay with Aston for a very long time. And there have been discussions, actually, that racing in Le Mans with the Valkyrie project in the future could be a good idea. And he has definitely repaired his relationship with Honda. That was maybe not a hurdle, let's say, but it was one of the interesting pieces of the whole, the fact that Aston will become the Honda works team effectively, the only Honda power team on the grid from 2026 and beyond, made people somewhat question, because if you guys know the infamous uh, you know, GP2 engine time that Alonso had with Honda, and then when he went to try and win the Indy 500, they refused to give him an engine because they were, maybe understandably, frustrated with a um, you know, that potential relationship there with Alonso. But clearly, those bridges have now, you know, they were burned. They have now been reconstructed, if you will. And now he has said that actually partnering with Honda again is a critical motivator because 
It's funny how it worked, isn't it? When Alonso was in the McLaren with the Honda, it was terrible. And then nowadays it's Red Bull with the Honda. It's pretty much the best engine on the grid. We'll see in 2026 if that remains true. But um, yeah, this was clearly a critical part of that re-signing. And that push for 2026 is massive for Alonso. And it makes sense from a couple of angles. Now, it makes more sense if he actually never had a Red Bull offer. And we'll discuss that right in a second. But even if he did, there's understandable reasons why to stay at Aston, right? Their trajectory over the next couple of years is very strong. The feeling is that they are at least trying their best to pay an absolute super max to Adrian Newey to get him signed. And Newey has actually made it clear himself that he would very much like to partner, or let's say it's a regret of his, that he's never been able to work with Alonso and Hamilton. He actually mentioned that in an interview not that long ago. So Ferrari are going to try and secure Newey services at Ferrari with Hamilton, and Aston will try and do the same thing with Alonso. And maybe if Newey is to be tempted, the possibility to stay in the UK, work near Silverstone, of the brand new Aston Martin factory with so much money flooding around and to work with Alonso is maybe quite an attractive prospect. So we'll see if they can get that done. But for various reasons, Aston feels like the team with some of the highest upwards momentum over the next couple of seasons, certainly with the way that Mercedes are currently going. I think Alonso has arguably made a very good decision. The question is, has he turned down a Red Bull seat to make this happen? Because that was the rumour that yesterday that Red Bull were, and certainly Horner apparently was interested in Alonso, and Alonso had, you know, the rumour was turned down the opportunity to go to the team in place of joining Aston Martin. But Mark Hughes actually says, and he was replying to a fair few people yesterday, obviously journalists for the race, no, because Alonso was not offered the drive. Norris was. There's no place for Alonso at Red Bull with Max in the team. So, yeah, this is the feeling. Like, who is ducking out of this Max Verstappen challenge? This was another tweet that went around. It was, was just ridiculous because it's so unfounded. But um, in the last 12 months, Leclerc, Norris, Hamilton and Alonso all refused the Red Bull seat because they're scared of Max, which obviously isn't true. But um, as Mark Hughes says, neither Leclerc, Hamilton nor Alonso were offered the place. But Norris, we believe, was. So of these candidates, really, Norris is the only man to have been offered it and turn it down in favour of building his own team at McLaren that he believes is the way to go. Maybe that'll be proven right in time. Maybe it'll be proven wrong. But um, I mean, have a look at this. Hamilton and Alonso both tried and were told no. So apparently it was the other way around. Alonso was speaking to Red Bull. And this makes more sense to me, given what I feel about the character of Alonso. It feels much more likely that it was Red Bull not offering him a seat and him denying it. It was more so Alonso saying, look, do you want to give me a drive? And then saying, probably not the best idea, which is probably a wise idea from Red Bull, because if you give Alonso the seat, regardless of whether Max is going to win anyway, you're inviting chaos, even more chaos, into the domain. Like, Alonso would do whatever it takes to try and get a one-up on Max and try and find a way to win the championship. Now, would Alonso prefer that approach than staying in Aston? Probably yes, just in my mind. He knows he's near the end of his career, but the chance to be in the same car as Max, potentially be a title challenger next year, certainly next year if the car is good, and then the year after that, who knows, in 2026, win races, you know, I'm sure that must be Alonso's agenda. So it seems like it was less of a story of Alonso being, you know, scared of Max, and more so that Red Bull just have decided that doesn't make sense, really, for Alonso to be the driver alongside Max, which is also probably fair, and therefore, given all the options, made much more sense for him to stay at Aston Martin, given their future and the fact that Mercedes is not as attractive as Aston Martin is right now, very much arguably so. Hamilton, of course, also said this is last, like, November now, when there were rumours that he was speaking or his father was speaking with Christian Order and Red Bull that um, Hamilton said, yeah, I'd be more than happy to race against Max in the same car. And I feel like Alonso would feel similarly, but he signed the extension deal. He apparently spoke with other teams as well. He made a comment even during the Japanese Grand Prix weekends that, um, yeah, why would I join Mercedes? They're going backwards. We're going forwards type thing. And in the last couple of years, in terms of overall trajectory, that does seem to be the case. Alonso says, look, when I'm 45 odd, if I've lost my touch, fine. But um, it is quite incredible to see Alonso still having the passion and the ability and the you know drive to still compete at up to 45 years of age at the end of the 2026 season. And he could well become the oldest world champion ever. Let's say, well, even if he wins in 2026, he'd become the second oldest ever. If he wins in 2027, which um, surely is a bit of a stretch. But maybe age is merely an irrelevancy to Fernando. He could theoretically overtake Juan Manuel Fangio as the oldest ever F1 champion. But we've got to dive into, of course, what that means for the rest of the lineup. Because Alonso's saying in place, his partner has not yet been confirmed. Although, you know, we know what Lawrence Stroll says. Lawrence Stroll says, I'm a father first, then I'm a team owner. So as much as I would love 
for Aston Martin to become a more serious operation and to put a serious driver in the car alongside Alonso if they have real intentions, you look at Norris Piastri, that's very strong. You look at potentially Russell Sainz, as we'll get into in a second, that's strong. Leclerc Hamilton, arguably one of the strongest pairings we've had in a very long time. It could be Verstappen and somebody else. It's probably going to be Verstappen Perez on the evidence we're going to discuss, but there are other alternatives. You know, Alonso Sainz as a pairing is super strong, but... It's almost certainly going to be Alonso Stroll. There's also the possibility, given the way that Aston are going, that Stroll, whenever he likes, can step into their WEC project. And I feel like that is probably going to happen. And also for Alonso, the fact that he gets to be very comfortable as the number one driver for that team over the next couple of years is probably you know a healthy indication because he knows that he's going to get all the preference in terms of being the most likely championship challenger, which I guess is true. But at the same time, if Lance Stroll was in a position to win a race, let's say in some hypothetical world, it's um, Alonso's in a championship fight and it's an Aston Martin 1-2 and it's Lawrence Stroll or Lance Stroll sorry in P1 and it's Alonso P2 maybe some teams would swap the drivers around because Alonso needs the points right for his championship fight but would it be an incentive to let Lance win the race because realistically I think that's what Lawrence Stroll's goal is is to see his son win a race in that car he probably realises that winning a world championship is a little bit too far, but um, this is how the current driver lineup is. You know, there's so many options, by the way, right? It's like, nobody has been signed, really, for any of these teams. Even Gasly and Ocon, those guys, I'm sure would love to move elsewhere. But the feeling was, after this um, Aston announcement with Alonso, was like, okay, what does this mean for Sainz? Because outside of Alonso, Sainz is now, by quite some way, the most attractive option on the grid. So where's he going to go? And it would make sense for him to go to the best available seat, given that he is, I believe, the best available driver. Lawrence Bretto then says, Alonso committing to Aston, sources say Williams and Sauber are the two most likely landing spots for him, unless Red Bull decide they want to partner him with again with Max. So, you know, it's like, come on, are we serious right now? Like, Sainz to Williams? I would feel incredibly unfortunate for Sainz if he has to take that much of a step back from this year's Ferrari. Now, Sauber, I feel like in some ways it's a bit of an inevitability that Sainz will probably drive for Audi. Like, I think that is is probably going to be happening. But do you want to go there now when they're not even Audi yet before 2026 and their car and their pit stops are terrible? Like, you really don't. I think Sainz, in the same way that Mercedes might be interested in a shorter term deal, there is an argument that Sainz as well could have a short term deal on his mind because that would potentially allow Carlos Sainz to spend a couple of years at Mercedes or maybe elsewhere and then maybe join Audi if they turn out to be a good project, which would make sense because of his father and for various other reasons. So, Mercedes need a driver alongside Mr. George Russell for next season and the rumour has it as of today that man is going to be Carlos Sainz. This is quite likely to be a done deal in the relatively near future and you can definitely see why it makes sense from a couple of different angles here. The reporting today said that Sainz is looking at Mercedes because the Red Bull situation is very interesting and it is somewhat in flux and to be honest if we look at it in terms of pure results Perez actually had a worse start this year than he did last year. Like, at least last year, in four races in, he'd won a couple of races. He was looking pretty strong, and all the talk was about, you know, the Perez championship fight with Max that, for some reason, people thought might even be a thing. This year, he's looked better than he did at the end of last year. But with respect to the start of last season... You know, he's not won a race, right? And his Australia wasn't very good. So I still think there is the possibility that Perez has a severe downturn in form. I do feel like he has a better mentality, though, this year, Perez. I think last year, once he lost from P9, or once Max won from P9 in Miami, and he thought he was a championship contender... That was a real dagger. I think this year Perez realises, okay, like I'm not going to beat Max over the course of a season. So he can drive in a different way that potentially delivers better results. And if Perez maintains what he's done for the first four races, then sure, I think there's no reason for Red Bull not to keep him around. But there is an argument that Carlos signs into that team as a theoretically stronger driver could be a, a way to go. But Red Bull, I think they're going to take their time. They're not going to hurry these decisions. And Sainz, I'm sure, wants to get some sort of deal done so he knows and at least he's safe in the knowledge that he's got to drive somewhere for next season. So Mercedes see the value in this as well. Kimi Antonelli is clearly a, a phenomenal prospect driving in Formula 2. But there is an argument to say 
that having another driver in as a bit of a stopgap does make sense. Putting Antonelli straight in the car to replace Hamilton, that doesn't seem like the best idea, especially because Russell has some experience now for sure, but is he, you know, really a lead driver candidate? Like potentially a guy like Carlos Sainz could actually be. And that is the interesting question to me if this does happen as to what that relationship between Russell and Sainz is like. Because if you think things have got pretty spicy between Russell and Hamilton, which they have, Matt Russell's science could potentially be fireworks in terms of that team dynamic. So Carlos would like a two-year deal, basically a two plus one. This is what Hamilton asked for from Mercedes. But they said no for the same reasons as now. They wanted to put Kimi Antonelli in the car. They were not willing to give Hamilton a two plus one year deal. Ferrari says, Lewis, we'll give you what you want. And that's what has now happened. Mercedes, though, are looking for a one plus one with certain conditions. And it feels to me the more likely scenario is that Sainz may well just back down here and say, okay, you know what? Fair enough. I'll take the one plus one or whatever. Get a drive. Because the Mercedes is, despite the fact that a car has regressed, still the most attractive drive apart from the Red Bull that is actually available because do you want to join Sauber or Williams like let's be real you probably don't so the Mercedes would probably make sense for science and also there's the point we mentioned this a while ago now when we discussed the Alonso to Mercedes rumors because as soon as Hamilton left the thought was well could Alonso go to Mercedes that seemed pretty sensible at the time given the fact that Mercedes were ahead of Aston and theoretically that was going to stay the same way of course, over the last couple of months, that's been proven to be a rather different story. But also the prospect of Alonso replacing Hamilton in his car was, you know, I'm sure to Alonso, somewhat relatively attractive at the time. But when we discussed that Alonso to Mercedes rumour, the point was, OK, will he just be a stopgap for Kimi Antonelli? And does Alonso want that to happen? Because I'm sure Carlos Sainz doesn't want to feel like a stopgap for a driver that they will bring through. Or, of course, a stopgap for Max Verstappen. Because still, ideally, Mercedes want to get Max in the team and you know they'll try and do that whenever they can whether that's this year next year in a couple of years or whether it never happens at all that's what Mercedes will try but I think for Alonso when we discussed the rumors at the time and now the case with Sainz as well Sainz and Alonso if that was going to have happened but now let's say Sainz are probably confident they can just outperform Russell like this is at least the way that I look at it I think Kimi Antonelli will get that Mercedes seat the question is who is his partner going to be at the time? And maybe there's a feeling that actually this upcoming year, if Sainz were to join, it's a bit of a job interview between Sainz and Russell to see who stays in the team and who departs the team, potentially for Kimi Antonelli, because that would be quite the turn of events, let's say, for Russell if Sainz was to come in after Russell was expected to be effectively the, you know, the next world champion, right? Because Mercedes are doing very well going into 2022. His feeling probably was, Russell, okay, maybe Hamilton gets his eighth, then he retires, then it's my turn to win the world championships with Mercedes. But clearly, the car is not going in that direction. And who knows, maybe, you know, a new young driver comes on the scene and Russell ends up having to part ways for him if there's a strong teammate alongside Russell, which there may very well be. So if I want to interest your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section, it does create some rather fascinating lineups for next season. Probably not as many fireworks if this does happen because assumedly then Perez would stay at Red Bull if Sainz was to go to Mercedes. Probably not as many fireworks as could have been expected because it would be a straight seat swap with Hamilton and Sainz between Ferrari and Merck which would be interesting enough. Okay there could have been more interesting things if this is what happens but it does create quite some driver lineups for next year. Just one final thing to mention that Ferrari's Imola upgrade. It's quite clear now that the upgrades are no longer bringing you know half a second or whatever like they kind of could back at the start of 2022 because the performance ceiling isn't that far away but Ferrari believe that with their Imola package they can gain between two or three tenths a lap they were three tenths ish off the pace of Red Bull in Suzuka and kind of elsewhere as well so the feeling is that Ferrari if their upgrades work can genuinely close the gap to Red Bull that's what Sainz believes and maybe he's going to close out this season on an absolutely massive high before having to join Mercedes but very much interested to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and I'll see you next time.